crypto. Congress dawdles as 1.7 trillion con game goes unregulated, threatening reputation of U.S. markets. If you want to get your hair cut outside your home in the United States, the job has to be done by a licensed worker at a regulated business. The same thing applies to plumbers, electricians, and home, ex home inspectors, or real estate and insurance agents. They all require a license and are subject to regulatory scrutiny. Likewise, commodities like corn, sugar, wheat, lumber, oil are all traded on a regulated exchange, which are overseen by a federal regulator. But for reasons that have yet to be explained to the American people, when it comes to the 1.7 trillion cryptocurrency market, which is effectively a con game based on the greater pool theory, nothing is regulated. Not the cryptocurrency, not the promoters, not the crypto exchanges, and not the firms that are providing as much as 100 times leverage to fuel this rat poison squared, as the legendary investor Warren Buffett has cr characterized Bitcoin. The, the smartest guys in the room call Bitcoin rat poison squared. A colossal pump and dump scheme and a big criminal scam, but regu federal regulators look the other way. That's a link in the article for another article. At a May 6th hearing before the House Financial Services Committee, newly seated Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Gary Gensler testified as follows. Right now, the exchanges trading in these crypto assets do not have a regulatory framework, either, to, either at the SEC or our sister agencies, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Gensler added, right now there's a market regulator around these crypto exchanges and there's really not protection against fraud and manipulation. The U.S. now has the dubious distinction of being the capital of innovation for every conceivable type of fraud surrounding cryptocurrency, a currency backed by nothing and regulated by no one. Thus, last Friday, the SEC brought charges, link in the article for those, against hustlers for the crypto exchange Bit BitConnect. According to the SEC complaint, BitConnect, an unincorporated organization, raised approximate, approximately $2 billion by conducting an unregistered offering and sale of securities in the form of investments into Bitcoin. BitConnect lending program. Defendants Brown, Grant, Mason, and Noble, along with the BitConnect itself and others, offered and sold the lending program as securities without registering the offering with the SEC as required by the federal securities laws and without valid exemption uh, from this registration requirement. End quote. On May 17th, the Federal Trade Commission reported, a link in the article for that, that crypto scams are skyrocketing. It wrote, Reports to the FTC's Consumer Sentinel suggest that scammers are cashing in on a buzz around cryptocurrency and luring people into bogus investment opportunities in record numbers. Since October 2020, reports have skyrocketed, with nearly 7,000 people reporting losses of more than $80 million on these scams. End quote. As of this morning, according to the website coinmarketcap.com, Bitcoin had a market cap of $724.5 billion. That's more than the combined market cap of two of the largest banks in the United States, J.P. Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo. It's also more than the combined market cap of Boeing, General Motors, Ford, AT&T, and General Electric. The trading in all these companies is regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. They must publish audited financial statements. They must disclose all material facts to the public. None of that is true when it comes to the 1.7 trillion cryptocurrency market. But aside from Bitcoin, there are other cryptocurrencies that make up the balance of the 1.7 trillion market. According to the coinmarketcap.com, as of this morning, Ethereum had a market cap of $323.9 billion. That's, that's 55 times the market cap of Macy's. Then there's a Binance coin, which has a market cap of $64.5 billion. That's more than twice the market cap of Delta Airlines. Does any of this sense, make sense for the U.S. markets, which Republicans in Congress can continue to refer to as the envy of the world? Previously, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell stated that cryptocurrencies were essentially a substitute for gold rather than for the dollar. I'll link in the article for that. We'd like to suggest that cryptocurrencies are a substitute for gold, only if it's gold mined at a BRE-X style gold mine. I'll link in the article for that. BRE-X was originally a penny stock that soared to a high of 286.5 on uh, the Toronto Stock Exchange uh, in May of 1996. An officer of the company claimed in an interview that the company owned a massive gold deposit in Busang, Indonesia, amounting to 200 million ounces of gold, or about 70 billion. 
that would have made it the largest gold discovery in history. In reality, the mine was an elaborate fraud based on salting of samples of gold. Bree X shares collapsed uh, and became worthless, forever tainting the Toronto Stock Exchange for listing one of the biggest stock scandals in Canada, Canada's history. Congress and federal regulators need to step in before this crypto cancer metastasizes further and becomes a permanent indelible stain on U.S. markets. Morgan Stanley has already been allowed to place Bitcoin futures, link in the article for that, and its mutual funds and an annuity product marketed to retirees. The SEC has multiple applications pending to list cryptocurrency exchanges trading funds, ETFs, on the New York Stock Exchange. A publicly traded commodity futures exchange, the CME Group, is offering futures and options trading on Bitcoin, link in the article for that. A CME Group, a federal regulator, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, explains in this podcast, link in the article for that, that all that the CME had to do to launch its Bitcoin futures was to self-certify its plan with the CFTC. The integrity and stability of the U.S. markets is a national security issue. What on earth has happened to the U.S. intelligence agencies? 